In this video, I'm going to compare two medium German equatorial telescope mounts. The Lasmandi GM8 mount and the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. Are you in the market for a medium payload telescope mount? For a telescope weighing from about 20 to 40 pounds? Well, in this video, I'm going to be comparing two very accurate, very reliable, high quality German equatorial telescope mounts that you might consider buying for your telescope. This is the EQ6R Pro mount. This mount was released by Skywatcher in 2018, and they still make it today. It's manufactured at the Sinta factory in Suzhou, China. This mount is currently going for 2,025 US dollars with free shipping. It has a 44 pound payload capacity. Although, as with most telescope mounts that I've tested, I wouldn't rely on that. I wouldn't put more than 30 pounds total on this mount, not including the counterweights. It comes with two 11 pound counterweights. It's a go-to mount, meaning it's electronically operated and has a computer that will locate and track objects in the sky. It comes with the DC power cord, which is good because it has a proprietary plug that goes into the mount, but you can buy AC power cables for it separately and operate it with lithium ion battery, or you can plug it into your house's power or garage if you're outside of your garage. The mount head weighs 38 pounds and the mount comes with steel, very sturdy tripod. The tripod weighs 16 and a half pounds. So fully assembled, not including the two 11 pound counterweights, it weighs 54.5 pounds. It has a handle to assist in getting it onto the tripod, but the placement is too far back because all the weight is forward. But the handle is helpful in moving the mount head onto the tripod and moving it around. The mount uses belt drives and stepper motors with no internal gearbox, so there's very little backlash and there's periodic error correction, although you have to set that up. The mount has a USB port, allowing it to be controlled with the computer, or it can be controlled with the SendScan hand controller that comes with it that has a 42,000 object database. It has a snap port for a shutter release of your camera, and it has an old-fashioned auto-guide port for auto-guiding for astrophotography and the saddle accepts Lasmandi style or Vixen style dovetail bars. The counterweight shaft is retractable and it comes with an illuminated polar scope for polar aligning. The website says the polar scope is aligned to the mount center axis and I'm not sure what they mean by that. My mount's polar scope was calibrated when I received it. I did check it during the day. What that means is that when you look at an object with the polar scope and get it in the center of the crosshairs on the polar scope and then rotate the mount 180 degrees, you see if the object is still in the crosshairs. And if it isn't, you have to calibrate it by turning the set screws around the polar scope. Mine was calibrated when I received it. I got it on an object and I rotated the right ascension and it's dead on. So I'm very happy with it. So I'm done calibrating the polar scope reticule. But it wasn't lined up straight up and down. So when polar aligning, you have to turn the RA axis a few degrees until the polar scope crosshairs are exactly straight up and down, which is very annoying. Also, you must turn your declination 90 degrees in order to even see through it because otherwise it's blocked by a bar that runs down the middle. I find this a slight annoyance as well. The declination and RA are locked with these levers. After you polar align, you have to make sure that you turn it back 
the declination to 90 degrees and the RA back to zero, otherwise your polar alignment will be off. And you have to set your latitude before polar aligning and it ranges from five to 65 degrees latitude. You can get the EQ6R Pro with Wi-Fi, but mine doesn't have it. When slewing, it's pretty quiet. It slews very slowly though, unless you change the default setting by hitting two and then six to go to the fastest slew rate. I've used this mount extensively for about three years now, and I've found it to be very accurate and very reliable, as long as you polar align accurately. Astrophotographers love this mount because of its accuracy, and I love it for its accuracy for visual use. I have used it for astrophotography, and it performed very well. The mount is very sturdy. It's rock solid. <laughs> it's a great mount. On the downside, it's heavy, and it's not at all portable. The good news is that you can take it apart and lessen the load of each component, but then you have to put it back together each night you use it. I keep my mount assembled like this in my garage because I can carry it assembled a short distance down the driveway. Not too far though, because it's pretty heavy. Obviously not with any counterweights on it because then it would be way too heavy. To assemble it, if you can't keep it together, it's very easy. You just run this center pole up through a hole at the bottom of the mount head and screw it in. That's it. I do keep a cover on it in the garage to keep dust off of it because it is a computer. And I did have to buy a third counterweight. The two it comes with look just like this but I needed a third one in order to balance my 10 inch 30 pound telescope. And when I have my six inch refractor on here, depending on what I'm looking at, sometimes I would have to get on the ground. So you can buy a pier extension like this to raise it if you have that issue. This is my Lasmandi GM8 mount. Lasmandi came out with the G11 mount in 1992 and a few years later, they released the GM8 and they still make this mount and it's manufactured right here in the United States in Burbank, California. But the latest iteration of this mount is modular so that you can upgrade the components. Mine is the standard configuration. It uses high precision ball bearing housed brass worm gears the worm gears on this mount have an eight minute period, if that means anything to you. I believe it has to do with astrophotography. The mount is precision machined, black anodized steel and aluminum. The GM8 mount is 2,745 US dollars. It comes with the mount head, the counterweight shaft that weighs five pounds, and is removable, screws in here, and a seven pound counterweight. And it has a payload capacity of 44 pounds of astrophotography gear and 55 pounds for visual use. And I took this information directly from their website. Unlike every other telescope mount that I've ever used, Lasmandi's numbers are actually reliable. All other manufacturers grotesquely overestimate the payload capacity of their telescope mounts, but I would trust the Lasmandi with 55 pounds of equipment if I could even lift that much, which I cannot. The heaviest telescope that I've ever put on the GM8 mount was the 30 pound Mead 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And this mount, performed very well, like a dream, with that telescope on it. It was very accurate. The GM8 mount uh, head, the website says, weighs 21 pounds. I weighed it myself and it weighed 22 pounds, but close enough. And the mount head, three. And the tripod 
weighs 14 pounds. So 36 pounds total, plus however much counterweight you need, and the counterweight shaft, which weighs five pounds. Just like the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, this is an electronic go-to mount that uses the Gemini 2 computer to locate and track objects in the night sky. The Gemini 2 is very easy to use. You can use it with the hand controller that comes with it. It's touchscreen on one side and buttons on the back. The computer is removable and it has multiple ports on it, including Ethernet, USB, and serial port. So it's compatible with SkyFi, Nina, Skywire, and Bluetooth adapters. The computer has a 42,000 object database, and it has polar alignment assist, and it has periodic error correction, and importantly, it has model building capability, making it incredibly accurate. The go-to is accurate within one half of an arc second, according to the Lasmandi website. And I believe it, the object is always in the field of view when I've used this mount. The saddle accepts Lasbandi, of course, they invented it, or Vixen-style dovetail bars. You can purchase a polar scope that goes right here separately, because uh, they want you to use iPolar, electronic polar scope, but that means bringing uh, along a computer. So I bought the polar scope because I don't want to use a computer. <laughs> and I absolutely do not want to use iPolar. In fact, I have an electronic polar scope. It's not iPolar. And I never use it. At first, I didn't like this polar scope um, that I bought from Laws Mandy because it has pictures of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia on it, and you have to line up where those constellations are in the sky with where they are in the polar scope. And I thought this would be inaccurate, but actually, it's very accurate. <laughs> and you don't have to turn the declination or the RA at all. You turn the whole polar scope inside the tube to make it uh, to line up Polaris with where it should go. It's so easy to use, I love it. And another thing is that the Alt-As knobs are so easy to turn uh, to get Polaris where you want it. They're butter smooth to turn. The latitude range is zero to 68 degrees. Slewing, it's somewhat noisy. It's not as noisy as my Mead LX 90 12 inch, but it's a little noisy to use if you're in a campground or you have neighbors nearby. But it slews very quickly and smoothly with no backlash. You have to purchase your own power cable. And it has DEC and RA uh, cables that you have to attach to the mount from the computer. I highly recommend that you label them so as not to get confused in the dark while setting it up. Let me just say a word about Las Mandy customer service. I've only had to call Skywatchers customer service once when my power cable blew up. <laughs> they were okay. But I've had to interact with Las Mandy's customer service a few times. And I have to say, they have one of the best customer service departments I have ever dealt with. The head of the customer service department is Tanya and she is excellent at her job, and she is a sweetheart. I was planning to take a brand new telescope, my 10-inch Mead telescope, on a camping trip, and I was going to put it on my Lasmandi GM8 mount, but it snowed the day before I left, and so I didn't have a chance to try out the 10-inch telescope on the GM8 mount before I left. And in my excitement, I totally forgot that I only owned a seven pound counterweight, which is totally inadequate for a 30 pound telescope. No way can you balance that. And I didn't even think about it until I was about a hundred miles or more from home. So I continued because it was too late to turn around. So I called Laws Mandy and I got Tanya on the phone and I got her to mail me a 21 pound counterweight to a campground so I could use my 10 inch telescope. Otherwise I couldn't have used it at all. And she got it there in a few days. So Tanya, if you're watching this, you are the bomb. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to deal with such an excellent customer service. Thank you, thank you. 
my trip to a dark sky site was phenomenal and it would not have been nearly as much fun as I had without the outstanding customer service at Las Mandy getting me that 21 pound counterweight so I could use this awesome mount. So both mounts are accurate and reliable, but the Las Mandy GM8 mount costs about 700 US dollars more than the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. And the obvious question is, since I think both mounts are very accurate and very reliable, is the Lasmandi really worth $700 more than the EQ6R Pro? And my answer is definitely yes. I have used both mounts for astrophotography and both perform very well. The auto guiding was very accurate on both mounts. I mostly use them for visual though. And what a pleasure to have a mount that actually accurately locates the object for you. Two things I dislike about the GM8 mount is that the hand controller is too bright, even on the lowest setting, and they did change it with the latest upgrade to the Gemini. And the database, I have no idea what some of them are. And even though I label my DAC and RA cables, I often forget which port they go into, and they have these pins that have to be lined up in the correct orientation. Other than those minor things, I don't have any complaints about the GM8 mount. I consider the Lasmandi GM8 mount portable, but the EQ6R Pro, it's not portable. I took the GM8 mount camping recently. I keep my Lasmandi mount, tripod legs, and mount head in this Orion Rest in Peace padded bag. The whole thing fits. It's pretty easy to put the Lasmandi GM8 together. You just put the mount head on the tripod and it does require a tool that they give you this hex wrench but i bought a tool with multiple sizes on it and then you just screw in the counterweight shaft it sets up quickly and easily and it's easy to use and it can hold more than the EQ6R Pro can. And the polar scope on the GM8 is way better. I don't like turning the RA and deck in order to see through the polar scope on the EQ6R Pro mount in order to properly polar align. And the levers on that thing for Altaz for polar aligning are very difficult to move. And Polaris moves a little bit every time I let go of the Altaz levers. In my opinion, the Lasmandi GM8 mount is well worth the additional 700 and whatever dollars. I highly recommend the Lasmandi GM8 mount. The EQ6R Pro is a good mount, and if money is more of a concern to you than portability or the annoying procedure for polar aligning, then it would be a great choice. But for me personally, I still say my Lasmandi GM8 mount is the best mount I've ever owned. I highly recommend it, even though it got caught on the lip of the garage this year and it fell on my face, <laughs> causing a permanent dent in my precious face. I still recommend it. So that's it for now. See y'all soon. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.